giving me the wrong move to get made at this point. Tiffany Promotions and Bud Sports present the Indy 175 Championship. Live from Market Square Arena. An automobile race that is run here annually. Indianapolis, Indiana is also the home of the WBA light heavyweight champion, Marvin Johnson. And you'll be seeing him in our feature attraction tonight. A 15-round defense of his title against Jean Maria Mibi. Hello again, everyone. I'm Sam Dover, along with Murray Sutherland. And Mr. Sutherland has the distinction of being the only man to have defeated Jean Maria Mibi. Now, Mibi's lost twice in his career, once by disqualification, and once to this gentleman. How'd you do it? Well, Sam, that was a difficult fight for me. Uh, I was coming in under a lot of really extenuating circumstances, but we just kept the pressure on him, and by the ninth round, he was ready to go, so we took him out. So we have the expert in terms of that fight. Before we get to the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, we have the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship tonight. James Salerno against Prince Charles Williams, and we're ready to go ringside. Nice to have you with us tonight from the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. And here we go, round number one in the red, white, and blue trunks. This is a vacant title. Both these combatants trying to earn the championship in the red, white, and blue trunks is James Salerno, and his opponent is Prince Charles Williams. Round number one, this is scheduled for 12. It is the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship, and we'll give you the rules of the game here as we progress uh, into the rounds of this fight. Salerno has been around as a professional for a considerable period of time, 10 years to be exact, which is 40% uh, of his life. He turned pro when he was 15 years old. At 6'5", he has to be one of the taller and rangier light heavyweights around. On the other hand, Charles Williams, who is nicknamed Prince, after obviously Prince Charles, hails from Mansfield, Ohio, with a record of 19-4-2, 12 of them by knockouts. And I know that you fought a lot of light heavyweights in your career, Murray, but uh, you did not experience either one of these young men, did you? That's correct, Sam. Uh, no, at my stage of the career, I never ever encountered either of these guys. Right now, uh, Prince Charles Williams seems to be setting the pace of this fight. He's, uh, he's pushing Salerno around the ring, and Salerno's relying on his long, rangy jab to try and set up that right hand. But you have to know right off the beginning of this fight uh, that Salerno was insulted by the matchup. He feels uh, that the people, the promoters of this fight, are really using him as, I hate to use the expression, kind of a stiff, a stepping stone in the career of Prince Charles Williams. And as you may have seen in the open of our broadcast, he said that's a very, very bitter mistake they're making. So we will find out. Time will tell. This is round one. We're scheduled for 12 from the Market Square Arena. Despite the fact that he has 12 knockouts in his 19 victories, Williams is not known as a big puncher. Salerno, 34 and 7 is his record. As I mentioned, he's been a professional now for 10 years. 24 of those by knockout. He has never been KO'd, and perhaps that's part of his game plan, is simply to stay away from Williams tonight, Murray. Yeah, he's, I think right now he's uh, using this round as a feeling out process. But Williams is, he's not leaving anything to chance. He's going right after him. He gets in close and he's throwing some wicked body shots, which could tell in a 12-round fight. We're nearing the end of round number one, and we're going to stay right here between rounds one and two and go back to the corner of Charles Williams and uh, hear what his handlers have to say after the first round. Obviously, round one, a feeling out process, as Murray mentioned. The bell on the end of round one, not much damage done. So now let's go back with Prince Charles Williams, 24 years old, out of Mansfield, Ohio. the ring now and see what James Salerno is hearing at this stage. Need 
for Shannon. Okay. I guess not much, Murray. Not much you can say after one round. Pete Susans was giving him some uh, very, very good information in the corner. Corner of Charles Williams. There you see the tail of the tape. Age about the same. A distinct height advantage for Salerno. Uh, three pound weight advantage for Salerno. About three inches in reach. And we'll talk about the weight because it's the most interesting thing and quite frankly something that uh, I, I, I would think that most of our viewers aren't aware of as Williams goes into early pursuit here in the second round and he's been the aggressor. Salerno was remarking uh, yesterday when Murray and I had a chance to visit with the fighters that while he will just make the weight limit of 175, he will probably step in the ring tonight somewhere between 182 and 185 pounds. And I was almost incredulous how these things happen. And in boxing, it happens frequently, apparently, Murray. It sure does. Whoa! That was a short right uppercut that uh, Williams threw up in between Salerno's gloves. He was backing off, trying to push Williams off, and Williams snuck in there with a really powerful right uppercut. Just caught him right in the point of the chin. Now Charles will go after him. Salerno try to shake it off, circling to his left. And he is in trouble. He is looking a little starry-eyed as he gazes out into the audience. Charles Williams has James Salerno in very early trouble here, round number two. If you watch Salerno, he makes a, he makes a mistake. When they're breaking, he pushes Williams away, which leaves him vulnerable to that uppercut. If you watch him, the next time he pushes him away, Williams can shoot that uppercut right under, right in between his two arms. We'll alert our stations if this round uh, comes to an end without a knockout. We'll be coming your way for a local break. This is round two scheduled for 12, the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. And James Salerno has been down here, a short right hand of the second round. And Murray, he seems to be weathering it just a little bit, although Williams put a left into his face and another right. He is being caught with too many good punches. This early in the fight, Sam, Williams is strong. He hasn't had a chance to tire, and his punches have got the full effect of his power. And he's really firing some good ones home. Salerno better be really cautious in the next few rounds because he's been caught with too many pu good punches. Double left hook by James Salerno. Try to ward off the shorter opponent, Prince Charles Williams. Thirty seconds to go in the second round. And Salerno may have weathered this storm and we'll see around number three, another long arching right hand by Williams. Sam, the telling blow in this fight right now is Williams a short right uppercut that he seems to be scoring whenever he wants. And they're along the ropes. The third man in the ring, referee Randy Newman, who was a former uh, heavyweight himself at one time. Whoa! At the bell, so Salerno. You watch this uh, short right uppercut sneaking right in between his gloves, Sam. There it goes, right there, caught right in the point of the chin. Boy, did he ever. We are back live now. This is the third round. If you've just joined us, it's Prince Charles Williams in the all blue trunks with a white waistband. James Salerno out of Tampa, Florida, the red, white, and blue trunks. Salerno has been down a short right hand, but he weathered round two, and he has come back here in round number three and seems to have uh, recouped what he may have lost in the previous round. Salerno has got to set up that jab. He's got to get that jab and throw it more powerful. Right now, he's just pushing out there, and it's no threat to Williams. If he would start stiffening that jab up and backing Williams up with the jab, then Williams would be a little bit less reluctant to run in there. How about the thing we started to talk about just when uh, Salerno went down, Murray? The yeah. fact that Salerno weighs eight pounds more than he did this morning when he weighed in at 175. Well, actually, that, that's a common occurrence when a fighter's trying to get down to weight, Sam. Uh, what happens is a fighter, three, four days before a fight, he'll start what's called a drying out process. He, he causes his body to dehydrate slightly, lose all the body water, because over the course of three days, you can lose four or five pounds just in body weight. And then after the fight, he goes, he hits the breakfast table. You mean after the weigh-in? I'm sorry, yes. uh, my, my fault. Yes. After the weigh-in, he hits the breakfast table, hits lunch, and by fight time, he's seven or eight pounds heavier than he was at weigh-in. Very interesting. A minute and a half to go. This is round number three, again, scheduled for 12. 
a somewhat disappointing crowd here at the Market Square Arena. Marvin Johnson, who is the feature attraction of the night, is a native of Indianapolis and has drawn some very, very large crowds here in past uh, title defenses. Uh, but he uh, tonight will come up a little short of what he has done in the past. Salerno has done very little at all to shake the confidence of Charles Williams at this stage. He just caught Williams coming in with a good right hand, which he set up with a jab. He's got to get that jab working. If he gets that jab working, his right hands and his left hooks will follow just beautifully. Under a minute to go in the third round. Salerno using the left hand, the uppercut. Now going to try to work the body. It's also interesting to note the height disparity here. A man uh, who has to punch down as opposed to somebody who's got to punch up. Which one would you prefer, Murray? I always prefer punching down. <laughs> <laughs> Again, our local stations, we alert you, will be coming your way in about 30 seconds from now. Salerno's best fight would be in the center of the ring, throwing that long jab and dropping that right hand over, over the top. He's got no business being against us, though, because that's Williams' fight. So we have come to the end of round number three, and we'll return after this word from your local station. Live the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, along with Murray Sutherland, this is Sam Nover. The USBA Light Heavyweight Championship in the all-blue trunks. Prince Charles Williams out of Mansfield, Ohio, his opponent James Salerno in the red, white, and blue trunks. The USBA rules a 10-point must system, in effect, for this fight. They have waived the three knockdowns, which means a fighter can go down as often as the referee will allow him. A mandatory eight count, however, is in effect, and a fighter can be saved by the bell only in the 12th and final round. We are scheduled for 12. Salerno went down in the second round, and that's been about it here as we begin round number four. Sam Salerno has got to do something drastic now. He's at what we used to term the turning point of the, turning point of the fight. He's let Williams had his way for, four, for three rounds now. He's got to throw a bomb or do something for to gain a little bit of respect from Williams because right now Williams is walking right through him. I had the first two rounds going to Williams. The last round I scored a draw purely because Salerno scored a good right hand near the end of the fight. But He's not doing anything in this round. I'll keep track of your scoring system, Mr. Sutherland. See how well you uh, you can observe the fight game now that you're out of it and sitting ringside and uh, donning a pair of micro a microphone and headsets. Instead of eight ounce gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Referee Randy Newman separating the fighters along the uh, far side ropes, as you see, a minute and a half to go in the fourth round. And it's pretty obvious who is in control, although Williams has lost that little edge that he picked up in the second round. He did not take advantage of the opportunity when he had Salerno hurt and certainly starry-eyed. And now Salerno with a short right hand. And it must be awkward, Murray, no matter if you're six feet, I would assume, or under. It must be awkward giving away five inches in height to anybody. Yes, it is. What happens, Sam, is you're trying to get yourself in range and meanwhile, you're in range of your opponent. He can pop you with, your, with his jab anytime he wants. Meanwhile, you're still falling four or five inches short. It's very frustrating. This type of fight, William should be using a lot of head movement, bobbing and weaving, shall I say, like a Joe Frazier type fight, just in order to stay away from that big, long right, left hand. And like I said earlier, if he starts setting up that left hand, his right hand will fall. Again, we alert all of our local stations along the network that will be coming your way for a local break here at the end of round number four. 30 seconds to go in the round. Despite the uh, relatively uh, young age of both fighters at 24 and 25, uh, they have fought some uh, quality opponents. Nobody better, certainly, than the current WBA light heavyweight champion Marvin Johnson. And uh, Charles Williams went 10 rounds with him before losing a decision. Salerno, on the other hand, has lost a couple of very difficult decisions uh, to Leslie Stewart, who I know you have great respect for, Murray. Yes, Leslie Stewart was the uh, previous WBA light heavyweight champion. We're back live at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. This is round number five, scheduled for 12. Again, if you've just joined us, Prince Charles Williams in the blue trunks with a white uh, waistband. And in the red, white, and blue trunks is James Salerno out of Tampa, Florida. Won 34 of 41 professional fights. As I said, he's been a pro now since he was 15 years old. Williams looked a little bit winded there between uh, rounds four and five, did he not, Murray? He did, Sam. He looked a little bit tired, but he's come out starting this round off really fast, and he's caught Salerno with a couple of really good shots. Good left jab by Williams, forcing the head back at Salerno. 
Salerno says that his left jab is his best punch. He is, uh, considers himself a rather classic boxer. Of course, every, yeah, I've never met a boxer who still doesn't think he has knockout potential. And he's no different than anybody else. And certainly his uh, 24 knockouts and 34 victories would attest to that. But don't look for that to happen tonight. We are situated uh, directly to the right of James Salerno's corner. So you may off microphone hear some of the uh, signals from his cornermen, some of the uh, instructions. Just a warning from referee Randy Newman. No, Williams is bleeding a little bit from the mouth, which doesn't really mean anything, but it's psychological. It tells a fighter he can taste that blood and he knows his, he's hurt to a certain extent. And plus, it gives the other fighter a little bit of confidence as well. It gives him that extra shot of adrenaline when he sees he's hurting the other guy. Under a minute and a half to go in the fifth round. We're scheduled for 12. Williams with one surprise short right hand that puts Salerno down on the canvas in the second round, but he was up immediately, although he seemed a little disoriented for the next 30 seconds to a minute. Salerno having weathered round two, three. Now Williams with a double right hand and awkwardly fell into the ropes. His first one landed. One minute to go in the round. But it's still Williams who's the aggressor, and he is going to gain points for that, uh, Murray, no matter what. Absolutely. He is... Uh what judges call making the fight. He's pushing the fight. He's taking the fight to his opponent. And if the rounds are at all close, they're going to give it to the aggressor. Salerno just contacted there, connected with a good right hand, and he has Williams in a little bit of trouble right now. Salerno with a good combination and a good right hand. Now Salerno has Williams in trouble. And Charles is just trying to hold on here. Under 30 seconds to go in the fifth round. It has been Salerno's best. Actually, he's had a 20-second flurry, which has been his best of the whole night. In that last exchange, Williams lost his mouthpiece, so it may tell something. Under 10 seconds to go in the fifth round. The best so far for James Salerno. It's the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. The late flurry he threw, uh, Sam, he caught Williams, backed him up to the rope with a good right hand, and then um, went to work, knocking his mouthpiece out there with a shot left hook. We're back live. The sixth round. Approaching the midway point of this 12-rounder, and Salerno now gaining confidence with each round. more interesting stories of this entire night certainly surrounds Prince Charles Williams who was a young man who uh, at, at a point in his career Murray as you know was a little bit lost didn't have a great deal of direction and one night while appearing on uh, television in a fight was watched by a woman named uh, Jerry Stapleton who was also from Mansfield Ohio she took a liking to the young man when he came back to Mansfield she called him made contact with him said she wanted to manage him and that she'd get him a fight and she worked for four months to get him a fight and she got him Marvin Johnson I don't think she did him any favor at all but it seems at least in talking to Charles that she turned his whole life around he has a purpose now she's given him discipline she's given meaning to his fight life and he says he's at the peak of his career well he certainly trained hard for this fight so I can tell you by the middle of the Middle round, six round, he is in good shape. Now, what has uh, referee Newman done here? The, the one of the gloves, one of the strings Prince came Charles loose. Charles Williams, the, uh, the last piece of tape that they put on is starting to come adrift. What happened, Sam, is there's so much water and Vaseline, etc., used in the corners that if that tape's not secure, then the water and Vaseline lifts the tape off. And the danger is that somebody could get a, a lace in the eye. The opponent could, could flick the, uh, the opponent in the eye and. Uh, So we'll have to wait for the official timers uh, call here. We don't know exactly how long this fight will stop, but we are we got about a minute and a half to go in the round. If you're keeping track, a minute and a half to go in the sixth round, we've been informed. Williams working up high at Salerno, then coming down to the body, trying to develop some kind of rhythm to this fight, and it's been kind of disjointed. It's there, there hasn't been any great continuity by either fighter. Yeah, it's went back and forward. Uh, Salerno's taken the aggressive in the last round and a half. Now Williams has started to push Salerno back again. Again, they are fighting for the vacant USBA light heavyweight crown. Marvin Johnson held this crown and then had to give it up, relinquish the title when he won the WBA title for the third time. 
And again, we alert all of our local stations along the network. We'll be coming your way for a break here at the end of round six. It is scheduled for 12 to follow the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World, and that should be a dandy with Marvin Johnson against Jean-Marie Amiby, who is virtually unknown here in the United States, a young man who came from Cameroon, moved to Paris 13 years ago, and is now trying to work his way into a position, having been ranked first and second by the WBA and Ring Magazine, respectively, into becoming a household word, and we'll find out whether or not he can accomplish that. Get off that arm. At the 10-second mark in round six, we'll return to the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana, with round number seven after this word from your local station. Hang with us. The bell in round number seven, and Murray, how have you got scored so far through six rounds here? Sam, the, the fight has ebbed and flowed. It's, I've got to score dead even right now. All right, we shall Three see. rounds apiece. We'll see how close you are. Again, it's a 10-point must system here in, uh, well, not necessarily in Indiana, but the USBA rules. Williams, the aggressor, trying to uh, work on the body of James Salerno a little bit. Williams just threw one of those body shots we're just referring to, and it was on what, what's called the blind side of the referee. The referee didn't see it, and it hit a good three inches below the belt line. Cool, and then an uppercut from in close. That seems to be Williams' was telling blow in this fight. He gets in close. He's so close that Salerno can't punch him because of those long arms, and he shoots that short right uppercut in between Salerno's guard. Salerno at times almost seems to be coasting just to relax to keep himself uh, certainly uh, with enough stamina to go 12 here. It's always a psychological effect. If you've never been the long distance in a fight such as 10 or 15 or 12 rounds, it, once the middle of the fight comes, you're starting to get tired and you're saying to yourself, have I got enough gas to go? They have stopped the fight again for the same reason we did a round or two ago, and that is because of uh, loose tape on the left glove of James Salerno. It's been cut off now, and referee Randy Newman now has had to stop the fight twice for repa repairs to the gloves. Brings the fighters back together again, so the clock will resume. A little over a minute and a half to go here in the seventh round of the 12-rounder. And again, a little blood coming from the mouth of Williams, but it certainly doesn't do any damage, or doesn't appear to at the moment. Williams just scored with a terrific right hand in there, close. A little swelling under the right eye of James Salerno would be the only mark on his face that is noticeable. A minute and a half to go in the round. And again to our local stations, it'll be your break time coming up here at the end of round seven. Almost at times, it looks as if Salerno is completely off balance, but Williams has not been able to take advantage of the times when he's been vulnerable, I don't think, Murray. No, he's an awkward type of fighter, Sam. He's, uh, he's, he's what, what I used to call gangly. He hangs on you. His arms get in the way. His elbows get in the way. You just can't get a clear shot at him. Using everything to his advantage, I'm sure. Good tight shot along the ropes of the infighting, and there's not much of it here. This round seven has been kind of a coasting round for both fighters. 30 seconds to go in the round. Short left and right by Salerno that did absolutely no damage to Williams. And it remains to be seen who's going to be able to pick up the pace a little bit here as, as we head to the stretch drive of this fight. They both had a pretty good rest here in round number seven. We'll return to the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Indiana, after we take time out for this word from your local station. He'll score. Boom. Mm. Catches him beautiful, right on the chin. You're absolutely right. I almost didn't see it. They were right in front of us here, and uh, from the other angle, you could see it a lot better. This is round eight. And again, it's anybody's fight. Murray's got it even here through seven rounds. Randy Newman now is almost having to talk to the fighters and say, let's make a fight out of this thing, guys. There is a title that hangs in the balance. Salerno trying to keep his distance and utilize the best shot he's got, which is the left jab. And Williams, obviously, with a game plan of his own, which is to stay inside the jab of Salerno, tie him up on the inside, and work on his body. 
And there have been times that both have been successful, but more often than not, they have not been successful with their game plan. You'll notice every time they get close, uh, Sam, Salerno wraps that left-hander has round his back, which nullif there goes, Ooh, there goes Williams' his mouthpiece again. Yeah, Salerno caught with a good right hand there. I don't think he hurt Williams, but he got the mouthpiece up. Now tell me, Murray, what kind of damage can happen at this point? I mean, how dangerous is it to be without your mouthpiece? Well, it is very dangerous because you've got nothing to bite down on. You can't put your teeth together. If you get caught with an uppercut, you can chip your teeth. Plus, you're more susceptible to mouth cuts because your lips can be punched over your teeth, and your teeth can be used as cutting edges. Maybe the worst damage of all, you're thinking about it, and you're not thinking about your opponent. Psychologically, probably is very dangerous to you. Under a minute and a half to go. This is round number eight, and Charles Williams has lost his mouthpiece. Now, whether or not Salerno could inflict any damage in that area remains to be seen. Working on the head, Salerno working upstairs. Landed a couple of good short punches. Working in combinations for one of the rare times tonight. We commented about damage a little while ago, and... Williams' right eye seems to be closing pretty quickly, and I think it's due to the long jabs of Salerno. Under a minute to go in the eighth round. We're scheduled for 12. It's the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship, the United States Boxing Association. Local stations, your break coming up next year after round number eight. And Williams not deviating one iota from his fight plan, which is to stay inside Salerno's very long reach. Three inches longer than Williams, to be exact. And uh, James standing five inches taller and trying to utilize that to his benefit. But they both look a bit fatigued at the moment. Salerno just keep on pecking away with that jab. He catches him with a good right hand. Like I said earlier. Oh, he, yeah. He gets that jab working. Everything's going to come behind it. And William's eye is starting to close. Under 10 seconds to go in the eighth round. We'll return to the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis after this word from your local station. Here you'll see uh, Salerno catching them with a good right hand, which really sends his <laughs> mouthpiece flying. Freeze the mouthpiece. Nice job. Nice job. That can occur for two reasons, and I think the last reason is, is the main reason. The first reason it could be is a poorly fitted mouthpiece. The second one is when you don't have your teeth clamped together and you get caught with a punch, the impact throws the mouthpiece out of your mouth. And as Murray had cautioned, we will watch the right eye now of Charles Williams, which is beginning to close and close rapidly. I believe I said it was the left eye as we uh, near the end of round number eight. It's the right eye. And Salerno was almost uh, semi-jubilant uh, at the end of that round where he threw his fist into the air as if to say, it's going my way, it's going my way. I'm doing what I wanted. I've been patient. I've held on to my fight plan, and I haven't deviated, and I've weathered a storm here. And I think he feels the momentum. Am I right or wrong? This is true. Like I said about after the third or fourth round, Salerno has to do something drastic to turn this fight around to his favor. And that may have been the turning point. That may have just given him the extra shot that he needs to carry him through the rest of this fight. He was a very disgruntled fighter with James Salerno a short time ago. I, I mentioned he has lost seven fights in his uh, career, professional. Five of them have been split decisions, and he feels there's been controversy in many of those split decisions. They're fights that he felt he earned, like many fighters feel, and that, uh, that he lost. Now, there's another mouthpiece gone. Was that Williams again? The same thing. Salerno caught him with a good short right hand and sent the mouthpiece flying. So for the second round in succession, Williams will have to go to the end of this round without his mouthpiece. He is already bleeding from the mouth, and his right eye is closing rather seriously, and Salerno building confidence here with each punch. But as I mentioned, he's a hard luck kid, so to speak, and he's felt that he's not really gotten the opportunities nor gotten the breaks that he deserved along the way. And uh, this would certainly be a great boon to his confidence and maybe get him some respect in the uh, light and heavyweight division. One, one minute to go on the ninth round. One minute to go on the ninth round. We will stay right here between the ninth and tenth rounds and see if we can't pick up some valuable information for you in the uh, respective corners. Williams just let fly with a wicked left hook there. That was what we used to class a desperation punch. If it had landed, the night would have been over for him. Unfortunately, he missed with it, but he sure got the crowd doing it on. It's like the long pass in football. you got to show the defense that you can do it, I That's guess. That's definitely it. Salerno cautioned... Uh, that he would not deviate from a rather conservative fight plan. He wasn't going to do anything crazy here. 
And he may have this fight pretty much where he wants it as we near the end of round nine. Under 10 seconds to go. Again, kind of a resting round for both fighters. And we'll stay right here and see what happens between the ninth and 10th round. Three rounds to go, and Salerno feeling more confident with each round. Comes back to the corner right here above our Bud Sports microphone. And let's hear what's going on in the corner of James Salerno. Set up that right foot behind you. Shake and drop that hand and come back with the hook. I'm saying bang, bang, bop. You can get this guy and go dead up the middle. Okay? Come on, now the body gave up. Now the mind takes over. The body's weak. Now well, see you see how strong your mind is. This is what your mind got to take over. Is I Let, I don't, don't forget, coming up after this, it's Marvin like, Johnson against John Maria Meeby for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Their record's both impressive. Amibi has lost twice, once to my broadcast partner, Murray Sutherland, once to disqualification. So actually, only one man has ever beaten him in the ring. And that was a ninth-round knockout at the hands of Murray, and uh, we'll talk more about that, certainly, as uh, the night wears on. Right now, we're in round number 10 of a 12-rounder. The USBA Light Heavyweight Championship, and Charles Williams pursuing Salerno across the ring at almost every turn. There was something interesting said in Salerno's corner between the uh, ninth and tenth round. His cornerman was telling him, your body's weak, I know your body's weak, now your mind's got to take over. That is so true. You get so tired sometimes that you have got to will yourself to go on. And this makes a difference between a champion and a contender. The champion has that power that he can draw on and push himself further. Well, let's see whether or not Salerno's got the will and the heart here. Williams again working on the inside where he has been most successful. It has been when he has drifted to the outside that Salerno has been able to gain the advantage. Two minutes to go on the 10th round. It's a 12-rounder of the U.S. VA Light Heavyweight Championship from the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Randy Newman has done an excellent job here of trying to sustain the action, keeping the fighters separated. He will have, however, no vote at all if this should go to 12 rounds in a decision. The three judges, Gary Merritt, Betty Huey, and Frank Garza Jr. will decide the winner of this championship should they go 12, Murray. You held this title once before for a couple of years, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, two years I held the title. I eventually lost it to Eddie Davis, who in turn lost it to Marvin Johnson. A minute and a half to go. Round 10. Salerno just caught Williams with another good Along right the ropes, hand. yep. Right along the ropes. Another good right hand. I think Salerno's got this fight going the way he wants it at this point. Now, whether Will Williams can swing it around again into his favor is up to Williams. And Williams looks terribly fatigued, as both fighters obviously are at this juncture. But Salerno just leaning on him now, using uh, that tall, rangy uh, physique of his. Oh, and again, he knocked Williams' mouthpiece out. For the third round in a row, Charles Williams has lost his mouthpiece. And so the prin prince on the verge of perhaps being the pauper at a juncture in this fight where he desperately needs to muster a little gumption and some heart is, uh, is doing more backpedaling than he is uh, being aggressive. Well, if I was Williams' trainer at this point, I'd take a little bit of the fight money he's getting for tonight and buy a new mouthpiece because it obviously <laughs> doesn't fit properly. Ten seconds to go on the tenth round. James Salerno has wrestled control of his fight away from Prince Charles Williams. We've got two to go at the end of this one. And we'll be back after this. Sam Nofer and Murray Sutherland ringside here at the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Nice to have you with us along our Bud Sports Network. It is round number 11 of a 12-rounder for the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. And for the third time in the fight, referee Randy Newman has been forced to take one of the fighters back to his ring to have the tape around the boxing glove either cut off or retaped. And in this case, his handlers are just retaping or taping a string down, I guess. Surface, if there's any Vaseline or uh, moisture there, it's not going to stick. And we resume action now. Come on, Jake. Oh, yeah. 
Salerno feeling very, very confident. As, as he should. He has had his win in the last couple of rounds. It's almost as if Williams has been told by his corner now that you're going to have to inflict some very heavy damage in the next two rounds to win this fight. I wonder if sometimes corner men don't tell their fighters that even if they've got the fight well in hand. But That's Williams, I think, if they told him that, they told him rightfully so. That's true, Sam. Uh, I think every corner man, every manager that's in charge of the corner tells you, you've got to win this round. You've got to win this round. Uh, you can have the guy knocked out, but you've got to win the next round. How do you have it scored, Murray, through 10 rounds? I have Salerno ahead by three points. He has come on strong in the last three or four rounds, and he's taken the last three rounds, in my estimation. Three points is obviously sizable when you have a 10-point must system. Two minutes to go on the 11th round. It would almost, if Murray Sutherland's scoring is correct, it would almost necessitate Charles Williams, if not knocking out Salerno and putting him down in the canvas a couple of times in the last two rounds to win it. This is true. We will take a local break before we enter the final three minutes of the fight here after the 11th round. We are very close to going the distance, and quite frankly, we weren't so sure that we would get this far. We have some real doubts about the next one between Marvin Johnson and Sean Marie Amiby. But stranger things have happened to Salerno with an excellent combination. Working underneath, using the left jab and the right uppercut. It's landing more frequently in the final few rounds, and it's a very confident James Salerno in the middle of the round now as we go through the midway point of the 11th round. Break coming your way here at the end of the 11th round. All right, James, you're leaning on him. Get off him. Get off him. That right eye of uh, Prince Charles Williams seems to be closing pretty rapidly. Get off, Charlie. Get off. And Salerno continues to just lean on him along the ropes. Under 30 seconds to go in the 11th round. And you almost get the feeling that Salerno can just stay on his feet. He has his fight won, which is a dramatic turnabout. Good right-left combination along the ropes. And again, he leans on him. He's got an excellent fight plan. Just kind of mauling him at this juncture, not letting Charles get in anything. And the right eye is uh, got a pretty good mouse under the right eye, does Charles Williams. It does. So we so we've reached the 12th and final round, the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship fight. Charles Williams in the blue trunks and James Salerno in the red, white, and blue. It was Williams with all of the activity in the early rounds, scoring a second-round knockdown of Salerno. And at that point, Salerno looked dazed, starry-eyed, looked all but over. But he weathered the second round, held on for rounds three and four, started to muster an attack in the middle rounds, and has taken full control of this fight as we enter the final round, the final three minutes. And there seems very little doubt that if Salerno is standing at the end of 12, he will be the U new USBA light heavyweight champ. As Murray gets splattered by a little moisture from a punch right over our Bud Sports microphone. That punch that uh, sprayed me with the perspiration was a, another good right hand from Salerno. He is catching Williams with just repeated good right hands. He is... Um, Deceiving, Murray, would that be a fair word? Because he looks awkward at times, and he doesn't look like he has all that great punching power, but he has done enough damage to almost close the right eye of Williams and to uh, remove his mouthpiece from him, uh, uh, relieve him of his mouthpiece on three different occasions. Very deceiving. He looks awkward, he looks easy to hit, but anytime you're fighting a guy five inches taller than you, you're going to have trouble. You're going to be running in, like I said earlier, you're going to be running into elbows and shoulders, and once you get close to him, he's got five inches of leverage on him. He's going to push you down. Well, if Williams should lose this fight, it'll be a very bitter pill for him to swallow. Charles is undefeated, as I mentioned, under the young lady who took him over a couple of years ago, Jerry Stapleton. He has won seven straight, and we have a warning here, Murray. Well, Williams was backed into the rope, and as Salerno leaned forward, there was a clash of heads. Williams motioned to the referee that was an intentional butt, but who knows? Well, since the referee does not have a vote, he has not indicated to the judges that he would suggest a point be taken away. He can do that, can he not? He can, yes, but very seldom is it done on the first offense. Normally, the referee will warn the fighter two or three times before he starts taking points. Exactly a minute to go in this fight. The 12th and final round. We'll take a local station break after this round. 
and then come back with the decision for you and crown a new USBA light heavyweight champ here in Indianapolis. And James Salerno keeps glancing into his corner. If you see him looking over his right shoulder, it's because he's looking to the corner. All he wants to do is stay out of speed for another 30 seconds, and one has to assume that the championship belt will be his. Good left hand by Williams. Williams just complaining again about a flash of heads, complaining to referee, he's butting me, he's butting me. I think it might be a little bit of desperation on his part. 15 seconds to go in this fight. And now Salerno is complaining of a low blow, and Randy Newman has warned Charles Williams. This baby is all but over. We'll return to the Market Square Arena for a decision in the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Sam Nover and Murray Sutherland back here at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. This 12-rounder went the distance, and uh, we are awaiting the decision. The ring announcer, uh, Stuart Goldner, is gathering the cards, and Murray, uh, maybe we'll get you on record now. You can see the right eye there of Charles Williams, uh, fairly well closed. Give me, uh, give me your point totals, partner. How'd you do? Well, Sam, as you know, boxing is very, very controversial, especially when it comes to scoring. And very subjective, too. Very subjective. But if I was one of the judges, I'd have Salerno winning the fight 107 points to 103. All right. Now let's go up and see how close Murray Sutherland is. The ring announcer, Stuart Golder, has our decision. Let's see who the new USBA champion, light heavyweight champion is. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the judge's decision. Judge Betty Huey scores it, 116 Williams, 114 Salerno. Judge Frank Garza Jr. scores it, 114 Williams, 114 Salerno. Judge Gary Merritt scores it, 114 Williams, 113 Salerno. The winner in U.S. Fight Championship. crowd reaction some of the strangest things in the world have happened in a fight ring but stranger things seem to happen outside the ring where judges make decisions you might have had an addition error here I don't know whether your points that I should have checked your addition but you did have Salerno the winner and the fact of the matter is this young man who seems to be racked with controversy wherever he goes has been bitten once again we just mentioned a few rounds ago, Murray, that he has complained repeatedly about losing split decisions. And he has lost a split decision here for the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Charles Williams is the new USBA Light Heavyweight Champion. And an ecstatic young man he is as you see him leaving the ring. We'll be back with more from the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis after we take time out into the uh, ring area. Came the hometown favorite, Marvin Johnson, the WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, and followed immediately by his entourage, and Jean-Marie Amibi is also here, and he's got a pretty heavy uh, entourage himself. Uh,